Hello everyone. In this video lecture, we are going to look at mixed strategy solutions of certain problems in game theory. So let's begin. In the last lecture, we have already seen what we mean by a settle point and under what conditions a pure strategy solution exists. So assuming that you have already seen the lecture, so let's move ahead to the next example. So in fact, this is the same example we left yesterday's lecture that when pure strategy solution does not exist, what is that kind of situation? So in this example, we formulated the payoff matrix and figured out that when you compute the maximum and the minimax and they are not turning out to be equal, then we say that no pure, no pure strategy solution exists. So the, what is the meaning of this statement that no pure strategy solution exists? This means that at this point of time, you cannot declare anybody of them to be a winner because it has not been decided yet. And actually, A and B will not play with just one strategy. So that means their strategies are not fixed. Some of the times, some of the moves, they will play with one strategy. Some other times, they will play with other strategies. So there will be a combination of strategies to be chosen by both the players with which they are going to play. So we have to figure out the optimal solution in this kind of situation. So there is, there are actually two techniques which helps us to solve these kind of situations. One of them is a graphical technique and one of them is the LPP formulation. So we'll look at the linear programming formulation technique later, but right now we are going to focus on the graphical technique. So there's a limitation of the graphical technique that it works for only these kind of games. So in general, we define a game to be M cross N type, where M is the number of strategies of player A and N is the number of strategies of player B. So when it is either M cross two game, that means N is two. That means player B has only two strategies or it is a two cross N game. That means player A is having two strategies and whatever be the number of strategies of the other player. So that means when either player is having exactly two strategies and the other player is having whatever number of strategies. In those kind of situations, the graphical technique is going to be helpful. And in all other cases, the linear programming formulation technique will be helpful. So right now we are focusing on these two kind of examples, M cross two and two cross N. So I'll be explaining the technique of finding the mixed strategy solution directly with the example. So first example I have considered is of two cross four game. So here player A is having exactly two strategies, A1 and A2, while player B, as you can see, is having four strategies, B1, B2, B3, and B4, and the payoff matrix is given for player A. So since I just told you, the very first thing you have to do is to figure out whether there exists a settle point or a pure strategy solution. So for that, you have to find the maximum or the minimax. So let's look at uh, the answer for this question. So if you found maximum, this will be two. If you find minimax, this will be three. You can see that the row minimum, the first row minimum is minus one. The second row minimum is two and the maximum of these is two. So this is basically the maximum and column maxima when you find four, three, three, and six. So the minimum is actually three. So this is minimax. So maximum is not equal to minimax, therefore no settle point. So we have to look for the mixed strategy solution. So that was the first step done. We have actually decided whether we have to go for the mixed strategy solution technique or not. So it's decided we are going for it. And now you look at your game is a two cross n type. So that means we can solve it graphically. So to define the mixed strategies, we need to define the probabilities because I've just told you that player A, none of the player will be actually using directly one particular strategy throughout the game. He or she will be using a combination of the strategies. That means there will be some chance, there will be some probability for player to choose one strategy A1 and there will be some other probability to choose strategy A2. So whenever there are probabilities involved, so our final answer is also going to be in terms of the probability as you will see. 
because here we cannot give a deterministic answer because there is no pure strategy solution existing. So for this we define the probabilities x1, x2 for the player A. So let x1 be the probability of player A to choose strategy A1. Let x2 be the probability of player A to choose strategy A2. So clearly x1 plus x2 is equal to 1. This follows from the law of probabilities. The sum of all probabilities should be equal to 1 because uh, obviously player A is going to choose at least one of them. So the sum of probabilities has to be 1. Need not to write both the probabilities lies between 0 and 1. That is something which is very obvious. So I have not written that. So once you define the probabilities for player A, similarly you define the probabilities for player B. So let y1, y2, y3, y4 denote the probabilities of player B to choose strategy B1, B2, B3, B4 respectively. And clearly here, due to the same reason, the sum of these yi's should also be equals to 1. So what to do when you have defined these probabilities? So it's clearly we have introduced some unknowns, we have introduced some variables. So by finding the solution, we mean actually to find the values of these six probabilities x1 x2 and y1 y2 y3 and y4 and what else we are always looking for that who is winning the game and what is the value of the game so all of the questions will be answered and that will constitute a complete optimal solution of the game so let's see what to do next so here i have uh, written the matrix in this form it's just instead of a1 a2 i have written x1 x2 their probabilities values because i need to use this for the mathematical calculation. So I'll be drawing a table like this. B's pure strategy is expected payoff. So first thing you need to know here is that how to decide that whether we'll be computing A's payoff or B's payoff. So on that player A payoff will be computed which is having exactly two strategies. So player A is having exactly two strategies so we'll be computing A's payoff and B's pure strategy will be written in this column. So now let's understand what is the meaning of this expected payoff. Since I told you a pure strategy solution does not exist, that means, look at this number 2. If A chooses strategy A1 and B chooses B1, so this is a payoff of player A, exactly 2. And this is a payoff if B chooses B1, A chooses A2, exactly 4. But since the pure strategy solution is not going to exist, that means A is neither going to get exactly 2 rupees or dollar, whatever it is, and nor A is going to get 4 dollars. So something in between the player A is going to get if B chooses P1. So that means the payoff has to be a weighted average of these two payoffs. It cannot be exactly equal to these two. It will be exactly equal to one of these numbers in the extreme cases. That means when x1 is 0, then the probability will be uh, of playing with strategy 2, a2. So the expected payoff will be 4. And if x1 is 1, then it will be 2. So how you have to write a mathematical combination of that? So it is the way you compute expectations, the way you compute the weighted averages. So it's 2x1 plus 4x2. So this is A's expected payoff if B chooses strategy B1. So in front of B1 we'll be writing 2x1 plus 4x2. And then because I know that x1 plus x2 is equal to 1, so x2 will be further substituted by 1 minus x1. And when you simplify this calculation, you will get it 4 minus 2x1. So that means essentially you will be just getting the equation in terms of one variable. That's why I said that player's payoff will be computed here, which is having exactly two strategies so that one of the variable gets eliminated and we just get the function in terms of one variable because we have to solve it graphically. So that's why this limitation is there. So now you just repeat the process for B2, B3, B4. If player B chooses strategy B2, so the expected payoff is 2x1 plus 3x2. So this is 2x1 plus 3x2 and then again you replace x2 with 1 minus x1. You will get this calculation 3 minus x1. And for B3 this is 3x1 plus 2x2. And for B4 it is minus x1 plus 6x2. 
so i have written them and using the same technique all the time i am using uh, i am getting these four expressions so what these four expressions are basically denoting as you can see these are always going to be linear function of one variable and we know that the linear function of one variable is nothing but a straight line so it's always going to be a straight line in the graph when you actually draw this so that means i have to draw four straight lines in my graph so let's draw the graph now so this is basically x1 axis and this is not x2 axis this is our payoff axis you can say this this side will be drawing the y values y value means the payoffs payoffs means this one we have computed the expected payoffs so since probability cannot be negative so therefore this side there is no drawing done it's strictly lying on x1 greater than equals to 0 side this line is x1 equals to 0 this is in the direction of x1 increasing and since x1 is a probability so it has to be bounded from above by x1 equals to 1 so that means the total graph will be drawn in between these two vertical lines x1 equals to 0 and x1 equals to 1 so now i have to draw these four lines so just draw some markers after drawing some markers so this unit you can standard assume keep the scale uniform so let it be just one unit of payoff so you can see the first line you put x1 equals to 0 you will get one point you put x1 equals to 1 you will get another point because to draw a line you just need to have two points so when you put x1 equals to 0 you get 4 so here I've marked at 4 so this is 1 2 3 and 4 and when x1 equals to 1 this is 4 minus 2 which is 2 so this side it is at x1 equals to 1 the value of the payoff is 2 so when you join these two points you will get the line straight line and this is corresponding to strategy b1 therefore i have written b1 here so remember you are drawing the line but simultaneously mark it denoted by their respective pure strategies because in the end we need to have this information from the graph that which line corresponds to which particular strategy so you go on and draw the other lines so b2 i have drawn b3 and b4 so it's easy to see the calculation you can very easily draw these lines before you can see when x1 equals to 1 this is minus 1 so therefore some values can be negative also so it's always a better idea to draw the downwards region below the line x1 equals to below the line payoffs equals to 0 because the payoff can be negative so now you're done with the drawing part now essentially we are looking for the optimal solution so now you just recall what we discussed in the previous lecture that A's strategy is to choose best of the worst what A is trying to do A is trying to do maximize his minimum gains his minimum payoffs he'll be computing and then he'll be deciding he'll be choosing that particular strategy which is giving him the best of those worst so maximin because you remember for a we always compute the maximin so minimum payoffs out of the minimum payoffs he has to choose the maximum so let's see in this graph where is the payoffs so these all lines are actually denoting the payoffs but where are the minimum payoffs so say corresponding to x1 equals to 0 this is the minimum payoff whatever x1 will be here corresponding to this this is the minimum payoff see all of these are payoffs but the minimum is lying on the lowermost line corresponding to this value of x1 whatever it is the minimum is lying on the lowermost line so you can see these are the lowermost envelopes this is called the points the combination of points lying on the lowermost lines throughout our domain so when you join this this becomes the lowermost envelope so that means this i'm talking about this triangular envelope so this line which i have just marked it's not a line it's a combination of lines this is denoting the minimum payoffs and what a has to do maximize this that means from this lower envelope we have to choose the maxima so this is also called peak of the lowest envelope so this is the point i have figured out so you remember what we have done we've computed the payoffs we draw the lines and then we figured out where is the lower most envelope and what is the peak of the lowest envelope so that point i have to highlight and now i am interested in finding the coordinates of this point that this payoff because this is a solution for a 
A is going to be satisfied with this payoff. So what is the value of payoff here? And what is the value of the probability x1 here? Because this side x1 is 0, this side x1 is 1. So somewhere this value is lying between 0 and 1. But exactly what va that value is? So that will be, that information will be coming if I compute the coordinates of this point. So you to compute the coordinates of you, this point, you need to know which two particular lines are giving me this as an intersection point because one point is generated through the intersection of two lines so i have to figure out which two lines are giving me this intersection point coincidentally in this example this point is the intersection of not two lines but three lines so there exist alternate combinations but since you just need two of them so i can choose any one of them so you can figure out this point here is the intersection of the lines of B2, B3 and B4. See B1's line is not there. This is the line of B1. So that is not compute, uh, giving the intersection. The intersection is coming from three lines B2, B3 and B4. So arbitrarily you choose any one of them. So I, uh, any two of them. So I have chosen B2 and B3 and highlighted these two. So this is the payoff coming from B2. This is a payoff coming from B3. So at this point payoffs are matching that's why you are getting the intersection so 3 minus x1 will be equated with 2 plus x1 to find the coordinates of this point which will give me x1 equals to some value and here I'm getting it 0.5 and once I get x1 I also know x2 because x2 is just 1 minus x1 so x2 is also turning out to be 0.5 so I have got an answer for player A that player A is going to choose probability sorry player A is going to choose the strategy A1 with probability 0.5 and strategy A2 also with probability 0.5 and what is the value of the game value of game is that okay if A uses this combination of strategies then what is the expected payoff so payoff is obviously given by this expression these are all payoffs so you compute the value you substitute the value of x1 in any of these either you put in 3 minus x1 or you put it in 2 plus x1 because both of them are equal so you'll get the same value so i'll get value of game is 2.5 so since the value of game is turning out to be positive so we know player a wins the game so this much information we have computed which player wins the game a what is the reward he is getting 2.5 and what strategy combination is using 0 0.5 0 0.5 now i have to get the similar answer for b that out of b1 b2 b3 b4 which two particular strategies b is choosing and actually i have already got an answer see here when you highlighted these two strategies so it's clear that b will be playing with a combination of these two strategies exactly so the probabilities if you define y1 y2 y3 y4 so clearly y1 and y4 are zero because the only contributing uh, strategies are b2 and b3 so y2 and y3 are going to survive but y1 and y4 is going to be zero so your matrix just reduced to this the first and last column goes and you are just left with this so this is always going to happen after the first step because there you figured out which two particular strategies lines are giving us the intersection point so you'll retain only those two columns and remove the rest of the columns so you're left with just two variables now to identify y2 and y3 y1 and y4 we have already computed they are zero so now the question is how to find this y2 and y3 so this is the exactly same technique we will follow what we had followed for a so just like you computed a's payoff here we'll be computing b's payoff so remember how we computed a's payoff for a it was x1 and x2 so remember we computed it like 2x1 plus 3x2 so this time you have to compute payoffs for b so this should be 2y2 plus 3y3 corresponding to first strategy of a which is a1 and 3y2 plus 2y3 corresponding to a2 and since they have to intersect so these two should be equal so this is the same logic what we used in the previous step the only difference was there we had four payoffs and out of those four payoffs we had to figure out that which two exactly are going to intersect that's why the decision was made according to the choice of peak of the lowest envelope 
but here if you draw the graph there will be exactly two lines one line will be this payoff one line will be coming from this payoff and since there are just two lines so obviously they are just going to have one intersection so which is going to be found by equating them so no need to draw the graph at this step you just equate them directly and you'll get the value of your probability so on solving i get y2 is 0.5 and y3 is also 0.5 because this relation has to be satisfied so we got the answer a chooses strategy a1 a2 with probability 0.5 each b chooses strategy b2 and b3 with probability 0.5 each value of game is 2.5 and a wins the game so because this particular question had an alternate solution because at this point you had a choice that which two lines to choose you could choose b2 b3 which we did you could choose a combination of b2 b4 you could also choose a combination of b3 b4 so there were three combinations existing so depending upon which combination you choose your answer can be different but final value is going to be same the optimal solution is going to be same the probabilities will vary obviously if you choose a different set of strategies there so this happens only in those examples where this kind of situations are there that the point of intersection is generated by being more than two point two lines so now let's move to next example the previous example which we have just discussed that was 2 cross 4 so player a had two strategies b had four so let's reverse this this is now m cross 2 type so player b has two strategies this time and a has three strategies so firstly when you quickly figure out maximum and minimax so i have skipped that step here please do that yourself and you will figure out that this question also does not have a settle point solution so no pure strategy solution exists so verify that yourself so i'm just going to straight away define the probabilities so i've defined x1 x2 x3 the probabilities for a1 a2 a3 and y1 y2 be the probabilities for b1 and b2 so this time we'll be computing b's payoff because i told you in the last example that the player which has exactly two strategies that particular player's payoff is computed here so it's easy for a1 the player payoff is 5y1 plus 8y2 and then y2 is being replaced by 1 minus y1 and you get certain expression similarly for a2 you get 6y1 plus 5y2 for a3 you get 5y1 plus 7y2 and on simplifying you get these three lines so you draw the graph so this time the graph is for y1 variable so y10 y11 and you get the three lines for a1 you get 8 minus 3 y1 so when you put y10 it is 8 when you put y11 it is 8 minus 3 5 so these values are 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and this is 5 similarly you draw the other two lines so you get the three lines drawn here so the drawing part is complete now i have to find the optimal solution so this time remember this is not a's payoff this is b's payoff and the sense of b's payoff is exactly opposite to the sense of a's payoff because b's payoff is nothing but the negative of the a's payoff so it's actually it should not be called a b's payoff it's still the a's payoff so what a was trying to do to maximize his minimum payoff b is trying to do the minimize his maximum loss loss is the negative of payoff so it should be this time instead of computing the peak of the lowest envelope you should be finding the highest envelope because this is the maximum payoffs coming from this uppermost envelope the uppermost lines and b has to minimize the maxima minimax so out of the maxima you have to choose the lowermost point so this point is going to be my optimal solution so now i need to find the coordinates of this so i'll be proceeding with the coordinate calculation so i just summarize the two examples that whenever a's payoffs are computed there you compute always the peak of the lowest envelope when b's payoff are computed in the first step then you always compute the dip of the highest envelope and how to find the coordinates of this point this is generated through the intersection of a1 and a2 so a1 and a2 i highlighted and these two will be equated 
So this gives me 8 minus 3 y1 is 5 plus y1. This gives me certain value of y1 which is 3 by 4 and on putting y1 plus y2 equals to 1, I get y2 1 by 4. And the value of game, how to compute value of game? This value of y1 you put in 8 minus 3 y1, you will get the value of game. So since value of game is positive, so player A is winning, this much is a expected payoff A is going to get. And now on the similar lines, we have to find the strategies. Uh, the strategies are found, A1, A2 will be used, so X3 will be 0, so only first two rows will retain because after this step I told you always your matrix will reduce to 2 cross 2. So you will uh, cross out the third row because A3 had no contribution in that intersection point. So I have drawn the table here, otherwise even if you don't draw the table that's fine. So this is X1, this probability is X2. So you have 5x1 plus 6x2 should be equated with 8x1 plus 5x2. So 5x1 plus 6x2, 8x1 plus 5x2 and then x2 will be replaced by 1 minus x1 and these two should be equated. So when you equate these two, so you will get certain values of probabilities x1, x2 I am getting. Value of game no need to compute again, actually you will get it same. You can say here also we get 23 by 4, here also we are getting because value has already been decided, it's not going to change. So this is the final answer, x3 is 0, I have not written that but you need to write that. So there were 5 probabilities involved, y1, y2, x1, x2, x3 and value of the game, these things you have to answer. So I have got the answer for everything. So that finishes this example as well. So in the next lecture, we are going to look at a general M cross N game, which are not solvable through graphical technique. And what that situation will be when both M and N are strictly greater than 2, like 3 cross 3, 4 cross 5 or any of those kind of things which cannot be solved graphically and which do not have a settle point. So they have to be solved by making a LPP formulation for them. Thank you.